was supposed to come and give a little brief introduction to our discipline-specific courses. I'm going to quickly sort of run over it in slides, but um, I don't have the depth of uh, information, so my talk might be a little shorter, so I thought it's best if I go first and then you guys can take the rest of the space. Um, Um, our courses at PolyU, our DSR courses, as we call them, discipline-specific requirements, uh, include uh, workplace courses uh, and academic courses, and they're taken by students in their second to third year, usually, and they're two to three credits, and yeah, I won't uh, read all the faculties here, but a number of different subjects are involved. So here we have some examples of the workplace courses. Um, I've taught the first one there, Workplace English for Business Students. The other ones I don't know that well. Uh, we've got a list here of some of the typical uh, assessments, both written and spoken. So as you can see, they're very professional uh, in uh, orientation. Whereas the academic courses, uh, so English for Scientific Communication is the one that I'm going to talk about more specifically later. Uh, uh, we have a number of assessments here too, uh, but a much bigger variety of the written ones than the spoken ones. But yeah, quite a range. Um, then we have a third type of courses, embedded courses. Um, they're not that common, but they form part of a departmental course. So typically it might start in week six or seven, or it's in the middle of a course. Um, sometimes they start in the department and we take over. Sometimes it runs kind of parallel. And they're a little bit different depending on what they are. Um, and it depends very much on the, the relationship that we have with that particular department, how well that works. Um, the course is run in a very similar way. We have a subject leader, a team of teachers. Um, we develop materials either in, hopefully in conjunction with departments, uh, sometimes with professionals in the field, as it were. Um, a lot of them have various process approaches, uh, genre analysis is called it, and so on. Um, we try to assess uh, or assure quality by um, having numerous sort of student feedback opportunities, midterm, end of semester, and then a meeting at the end with students with representatives from all of the courses. Uh, we also have teacher feedback on the course and course materials for subject leaders. Uh, so, yeah, it works really well. So, that was the quick part, the one that I don't really know very much about. <laughs> but I will still say, if you have any questions, I can try to answer them. <laughs> Is there anything at all that... Hey, how much... Um, uh, apart from the embedded courses, how much do you find that the uh, department people, the, the various departments, how, how much time are they able to give to, to help them develop? Well, I know that the one that I'm involved in, the scientific communication, we don't have a lot of cooperation. Um, <laughs> it may be the one where we would need it most, but um, they tend to eventually answer questions, you know, after the third email or so. So, yeah, it sometimes works. But I think other courses are much better. Other courses. I think, yeah. So for the embedded courses, uh, I can assume that is uh, you work with the department on the needs they want to say, for example, they need to teach the alternative. So it's not often alternating. So it tends to be uh, one course that I will be involved in soon starts in week seven, but I will sort of be there from the, in the first lesson mm -hmm. with the subject leader be introduced, sort of the students will know who I am, mm -hmm. um, go to meetings with the department and together sort of develop materials. So, so how do they credit your teaching? Do they credit your teaching for one credit or one? Uh, no, I think that just depends on how many hours it is. Yeah, so for me, in this course, it will be one and a half, which is not something we normally have. Mm -hmm. So that gets a little funny. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I think in the ELC, don't you have some peer observations now? 
yes. Uh, but you don't include those as part of your quality assurance? Well, yes, I guess we do. Yes, that should be on the list. Yeah, absolutely. What does the uh, feedback look like between the course teachers and the course developers? Um, that depends. Uh, I think it ranges from not much feedback at all, which is when the teachers are generally quite happy with what's going on, to like long, 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 you know, like here's the course materials and I've annotated everything that's wrong, you know. So it, it really varies. Uh, how flexible or <coughs> willing to change are the, the materials are the core In my experience, very. I think. Partly because usually the materials developers are also teaching the course, so we kind of sh probably share the same ideas of to English for Scientific Communication. Uh, I've been teaching that now for almost four semesters since I started at PLC, uh, at EU. Uh, I have no scientific background whatsoever, nor do any of the other teachers teaching this course, uh, which is obviously something that's helpful. <laughs> anyway, yeah. We try to persuade the students that they are experts in science and we're experts in communication. I don't know if they buy it. <laughs> 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 but, um, anyway. I was going to discuss a specific problem today. We had a specific problem and we had three solutions. But the previous talk that was at Poly U, um, I thought was so interesting, so I decided to scrap the problem and the three solutions and instead uh, kind of introduce this course and the two assessments we have, <laughs> highlighting some of the things that the people who came to Poly U last month were talking about. Uh, alignment, uh, student needs, academic versus professional, uh, and a few things like that. And then at the end, if you have questions or suggestions, that would be great. Uh, if you don't have any questions, and I have a couple of questions for you on, you know, would it be better if we did this, of course. Um, so, I've already mentioned briefly, this is one of the, the academic uh, discipline-specific courses, although it's not entirely academic, I have to admit. It's for all the students at the Faculty of Applied Science. So um, we teach chemical technology students, optics, physics, lots of different ones. Um, this has obvious problems, both for, for, for instructor confidence, because we can't be experts in all of these sciences, if, if any, uh, but we do our best. Uh, it also has, I guess, some problems because when it comes to alignment with, with the various subjects, it has to be quite general. Again, we encourage students to, um, to, to sort of bring up their expertise and try to say, well, okay, this is what we say about how you should write the, the results section. Is this how you do it in your department? Is this what you're told? Please, if, if there's anything different, that's fine. You're the experts here. You know bring that in. So we're trying to accommodate this, although the materials are quite generic. Uh, the students range from two to third year students. Uh, some of them are just regular poly U students. Some are senior year students or high diploma students. So slightly different levels, um, mm -hmm. which can be problematic if they're in the same group, but they're often in separate groups, so you can adapt to that. It's only a two-credit course, so we have a two-hour class every week and we have two assessments. Um, the first is a group report uh, for a specialist audience. Uh, it's a kind of a typical in-rad structure, although some modifications because they don't actually do their own research for this. They kind of present other people's uh, research. And the second assessment is an individual one, uh, where they write an article for a non-specialist audience. So, I'm going to just briefly give a little more information about these. Um, so the group report, because each class is only about 20 people, so we have maybe five groups. This does have the advantage of the teacher only having to deal with five different topics in each group per semester, instead of dealing with a topic per, per student. 
So it's a little bit easier to, to uh, you know, wrap your mind around the, the science. Now, if you have three different classes and three different disciplines, it still sort of adds up. But semester by semester, you kind of familiarize yourself with some of these topics, right? Uh, this is taught, uh, it's a four-week section, um, taught uh, flipped, sort of. So the students, they, they watch all these videos and do quizzes and so forth beforehand. And then we free up time for them to collaborate. Because they're very busy, they don't really get time outside of class very much. So, um, also if there are problems, we get to discuss them. Um, it's, as I said, it's basically a, an inward kind of report. So, um, the way we see it is that which kind of student needs are we meeting here? Well, the immediate academic needs. They need to, to read journal articles, so being familiar with the structure and typical content is helpful. They also have to produce reports like texts of slightly varied genres, you know, like final year projects and lab reports and so on. So um, we think it's helpful for their sort of immediate uh, academic needs. But obviously some of them will go on and, you know, study further, so obvious use there. But hopefully later on they will continue to, 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 to learn. So again, um, being familiar with the, the format is good for, potentially for their future professional uh, lives as well. Um, and, of course, this is written for a specialist audience rather than, than a general audience. So, in comparison with the second assessment, where they take the same topic uh, and then adapt it for a general readership, um, we find that it's really quite interesting because the language that's required for the second assessment, the less formal, the more engaging, is something that they're actually particularly bad at because they've been trained to be quite formal and technic technical to sort of, the, their whole uh, university career. Um, and the fact that it's the same topic again makes it much easier for the teacher to deal with the actual science of the materials. We've already sort of dealt with that in the first part of the course and we can focus on the language. Um, this part of the course isn't uh, flipped. It's more of a typical sort of delivery. And I think the variety is good. The students don't get fed up with, with, one, with one method. Uh, we have, at least until now, given the student the choice pretty much of what kind of genre they specifically want to write. So it might be a, a science news article, something like Science Daily, or more of a science feature. Some of them write a blog that's usually not very successful, or a, a website. We, we also do this Google Sites version, um, if, but that's optional. We don't want to force them to, to, to do that. Some of them aren't very comfortable with the technology. Um, but there's obviously more for future use. And we obviously talk to them about why are we doing this? You know, well, it ranges from getting funding to persuading your boss that your research problem, uh, research uh, project is the one that he should, you know, bet on. Or going to a high school and, and telling people there about your job. So there's so many different functions for this. And as I said earlier, we find that it's, it's really useful for them to actually try to explain themselves in, in plain English. Because that's something they haven't really done much of before. Yes. So, I don't know. Do you guys have any questions or any comments or oh yes I wanted to show you this. Sorry. Um, Could I ask a question? Sorry. Yeah. Um, so the order of those two assessments, the group work comes first followed yeah. by the article. Yes. So the the group work is done as a flipped approach and then the article is done more traditionally. Yeah. Does that work? I mean do the students already know each other? Because they haven't um, met in a classroom before you do the flip. Usually they know each other very well. Because uh, yeah. I was thinking it might work better the other way around if they didn't know each other before. Yeah, I think I see your point them. totally. But they actually do know each other and I think just we've actually thought about it. Sometimes the students say it would be easier to, to deal with a scientific topic in a more casual way first. Uh, and then write the more heavy report. Mm -hmm. But since we want them to do 
the same topic. It, it, it just doesn't quite work doing it. Though. But they already know each other, so they can work in a group quite easily. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, so they haven't had to get to know each other. Not really, not really. Occasionally you have a case where some of the students are, for example, senior year students that have joined another group. But then it usually works out so they form a group together. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, no. Yeah, are there any elements of uh, process approach, or is it all summative? Um, well, we for both of the assessments, they they, they do in-class writing, especially in the first one, and then we have consultations. Mm -hmm. uh, so they submit a draft, and then we meet group by group, and then they go back and they revise before submitting. Right. And with the second one, we do individual consultations. Right. These are essential. Yes. Right? Otherwise, right. it would just be horrible. horrible. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So you think that works well? Oh yes. yes. Oh yes. Would that be kind of typical in the, the poly U suite of courses to have an element that's like the current academic meetings and also one the future professional? Um, I don't know really specifics about other courses, but I, I do know that other courses have a similar approach that they try to do one that is more academic and one that is a little more general, um, less formal. Yeah, so this is just one example. This is a website. I didn't choose this because it was particularly good, but because I had permission to, to take it. But uh, yeah, so this is a website using Google Site, the second version there. And the other one is obviously just the typical sort of introduction methods and so on. Um, so if you guys don't have any other particular questions, then I have some questions for you, maybe. <laughs> Or time? Yeah, time. Yeah. Okay. In that case, I'll say no questions. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much.